And in my time, I met all comers, from lightweights to heavyweights. And I retired the undefeated welterweight and middleweight champion of the world. The difference is, in my time, to win the championship, you had to knock a man out. I've heard that a generational boxer crops up every 10 years in the sport. This could be taboo, but if I had any say so, I'd bet that boxer is Shakir Stevenson today. Now, 100 plus years from now could tell a different story. For this video, we go 100 plus years back to a guy who at that time garnered some of the same generational praise. He is now universally considered one of the greatest fighters of all time. He was born Joseph Youngs, but the world came to know him as Tommy Ryan. Born in Redwood, New York on March 31st, 1870, Tommy Ryan's parents were of French and English descent. Ryan was left as an orphan at a young age, but was adopted by a wealthy Syracuse, New York family. At some point, Tommy would run away from his foster parents' home, settling in Detroit, Michigan, where he would sell newspapers to earn money. This turned out to change his life drastically as disputes over territory with other newsies, including those bigger, forced him to fight in order to make a stand. After licking all of the big newsies, this attracted attention and soon enough, he was learning to apply his newfound trade in ring. This is when he adopted the Irish name Tommy Ryan, which upset some Irish Detroiters who felt that no man who wasn't of Irish ancestry should be able to take up such name. For the time being, it was Tommy Ryan of Syracuse. It was this prejudice that gave Ryan his first big break. Ring founder Nat Fleischer had the following to say of Tommy Ryan in a 1947 edition of The Ring magazine. Ryan, whose natural fighting weight was 140 pounds, was an ideal boxer. He possessed all the good qualities of a successful pugilist. He had speed, cleverness, a knockout punch, and was a keen ring general. Tommy Ryan made his professional debut on January 1st, 1887. At 5, 7 and a half, with a 70 and a half inch reach, Ryan would ultimately be most associated with the welterweight and middleweight divisions in boxing. Ryan would rack up five straight knockouts before fighting in Detroit on April 30th, 1899 against Detroit native Martin Shaughnessy, knocking him out in the 23rd round of a fight to the finish with two ounce gloves. The two would rematch on June 18th. In the 48th round of a fight that lasted nearly three hours, Ryan landed a left to the neck that sent Shaughnessy flat on his face, unable to answer the count. The fight took place in front of about 100 spectators, with Ryan winning $50 in addition to gate receipts. Ryan was a student of a time when fighters fought to the finish, and the only way to win a title was via knockout. Fights going well into the double digits as far as rounds were a thing of the norm. On June 6, 1890, Ryan would need only three rounds to knock out Henry Slaughterhouse Baker in Grand Rapids, a fighter who fought the likes of James J. Jeffries and Frank Childs in a short but tough career. On December 10th, Ryan would win a three-round newspaper decision over Frank Gerard in Chicago, a fighter who mixed it up with former world champions Joe Gans and Matty Matthews. By the time 1891 rolled around, Tommy Ryan had a master record of 15-0-1 and, and had passed every test thus far. Lucky for him, the boxing world had started to take notice and on February 17, 1891, he got the opportunity of a lifetime in a fight against the St. Paul Terror, Danny Needham, in front of around 1,200 spectators at the Twin City Athletic Club with the vacant world welterweight title on the line. The fight would turn out to be a classic, though not because of sustained action throughout, but more for the implications and the overall length of the contest. The two men wore two ounce gloves. The first quarter of the fight was rather tame as the two men paced themselves for the road ahead. The first knockdown came in round 37 when Needham landed a shot that floored Ryan, who was able to recover. Up to the 59th round, neither fighter had a scratch nor had blood been drawn. In the 61st round, the referee threatened to stop the fight if neither man closed it soon, forcing the two to step up the pace with a nice exchange of blows in the 62nd. After four and a half hours of fighting thus far, the seconds for each man started to jeer and encourage for more action. By round 67, the clock struck 2 a.m., with both men tired and not offering much through the 68th. In the 74th round, 
Ryan landed a left to the jaw that sent Needham staggering into the ropes, though he was able to recover. In the 75th, Ryan landed another hard shot on Needham, even fouling Needham several times, which caused a commotion. In the 76th round, Needham came out groggy and was caught with a left-to-right combination that sent him staggering into the ropes. With both eyes nearly closed, Needham made it back to the center of the ring where he was subsequently floored twice by Ryan. This forced Needham's corner to throw in the sponge at around 2.35 a.m. and after over five hours of fighting, Ryan was hailed by his supporters as the new world welterweight champion. Needham fainted after the fight and took over an hour to stabilize with contusions all over his body. In the end, Tommy Ryan walked away with about $2,000 in victory. $800 was at stake and about $1,200 in bets. This was the equivalent of around $66,118 in 2023. Ryan's first defense of his world welterweight title would occur on August 8, 1891 against Billy McMillan. Ryan used his countering skills to open up a cut on McMillan in the first round. Ryan, sharp with his offense, closed McMillan's right eye with an offensive onslaught in the second, which left McMillan dazed and confused. In the third, McMillan rushed Ryan out of the gates only to be sent down with the right body shot that broke one of his ribs. McMillan was able to stand only to be flattened with another right that sent him down and out cold. Next would be a December 13th contest with Frank Housen of the UK. Ryan would close Housen's left eye in the 6th and opened up a gash on his cheek in the 10th. In the 14th, Ryan fainted with his right which made Housen flinch before being caught with the left to the jaw that he didn't see coming, putting him down and out for good. A bidding war ensued for a rematch between Tommy Ryan and Danny Needham leading into January of 1892. The California Athletic and Pacific Clubs ran the purse to $2,000 before the New Orleans Athletic Club wired an offer of $3,000, the equivalent of $99,178 in 2023, an offer that Ryan immediately accepted. By January 7th, the two men had both agreed as both put up a $500 forfeit payment to secure the agreement. The two also each placed $5,000 side bets. This fight, though, would ultimately never materialize as an illness had ran out for a few months and the fight in itself was a victim of such. On July 30th, 1892, Ryan would face Jack Wilkes, leading in a bloody fight before the police intervened and the bout was called a draw after 17 rounds with Ryan retaining his title. On April 8th, 1893, Ryan would then step in with hard-punching Australian gentleman George Dawson in Chicago. Dawson started the contest hot with the left to the right eye of Ryan, to which Ryan responded with the left of his own that sent Dawson to the canvas, though he hopped up immediately. Dawson was back on the offensive in the second with two hard rights to the nose. In the third, the two men exchanged heavy blows with Dawson's eyes starting to swell. Dawson finished the fourth with an advantage while Ryan regained said advantage in the fifth. In the sixth and final round, both had their moments, but it was an even contest at close. It was reported that Ryan looked to be the more distressed of the two. No decision was rendered, though the Boston Globe favored Ryan by a shade. This led to a matchup on August 29th with one of the most enigmatic fighters in the history of boxing in Hall of Fame former world welterweight champion, mysterious Billy Smith. Smith started things with force on the inside in the first where he got the better of the work. Additionally, Smith, known for illegal tactics, would try to twist Ryan's nose out of place with his glove whenever tied up. This happened so many times that the crowd in attendance start to demand he fight fair. In the second, Ryan worked from the outside pot-shotting Smith before landing a series of hard blows at the end of the round, infuriating Smith. Ryan used his clever skill to hold his own on the inside in the third. Ryan opened the fourth landing three hard blows that got the crowd on their feet as he started to again box from the outside, peppering Smith. Smith again forced Ryan's hand in the fifth as he resorted to illegal tactics, again twisting Ryan's nose before headbutting him in the eye. Ryan fought back hard as the two men were bloodied with Ryan winning the admiration of the crowd at the end of round five. In the sixth and final round, Ryan continued to press the bloody and bruised Smith, who could not land cleanly despite remaining game. Both men fought it out until the sound of the gong. The referee for the contest declared the fight a draw. 
Before we move ahead, please like, share, and comment. This will allow for us to continue to make the videos that you want to see. Ryan and Mysterious Billy Smith will be back in the ring on January 9th, 1894 in Boston. Per a pre-fight agreement, if both men were on their feet at the end of six rounds, the fight would be declared a draw. In a cautious first round, Smith landed the two most significant punches. In the second, both landed solid punches, though Ryan spent much of the round on the outside avoiding Smith. Both had their moments in the third while slugging it out evenly in the fourth. It was a similar situation in the final two rounds as Ryan would land a hard shot in retaliation to a hard one from Smith. In the end, the fight would be declared a draw. On July 26, Tommy Ryan and mysterious Billy Smith would be back in the ring for a trilogy match with the world welterweight title at stake. Back in 1892, mysterious Billy Smith had defeated Danny Needham to lay claim to the world welterweight title. This would be the fight to settle any dispute and was scheduled for 20 rounds at the Twin City Athletic Club in Minneapolis, the same location where Ryan had defeated Needham. The referee for the contest was light heavyweight great Joe Chawinski. The two came together at 9.15 p.m. with Smith missing widely before landing a shot on Ryan's neck. From there, it was give and take with the two closing the round in a clinch. In the second, Ryan worked from the back foot continually countering Smith who repeatedly missed. Both had moments in the third but Ryan landed a shot to Smith's chin and neck to close the round. Ryan landed a hard left to Smith's stomach in the fourth as Smith again found himself repeatedly missing as Ryan continued to fight on the back foot. Ryan opened a fifth with a shot to Smith's stomach and head. Smith then landed a left to right combo to Ryan's head that dazed him. The best shots of the fight though Ryan returned with the shot to Smith's stomach closing the round with the same shot. In the sixth Ryan drew first blood with a shot to Smith's mouth. Smith, though, twice rushed and drove Ryan to the ropes with shots, even bringing him to his knees at one point as Ryan started to tire. In a slow seventh, Smith landed a kidney shot to close. Ryan remained elusive in the eighth, with neither fighter landing anything of note and Smith repeatedly missing. Smith led the action in a ninth, landing left and rights to Ryan's face in addition to another kidney shot. The two cursed each other out like troopers when they came together at the end of the round. There was little to no action in the 10th. Ryan landed a straight left in the 11th that closed Smith's right eye. In the 12th, Ryan spent the round laughing and pot shotting Smith with the left to his damaged eye. The 13th saw Smith land a shot to the ear, sending Ryan into retreat. Smith landed another kidney shot and closed the round with a hard shot to the stomach. In the 14th, Smith landed a right to the chest that nearly floored Ryan as he again went into retreat to avoid getting dropped. In the 15th, Smith landed a hot right to Ryan's ribs, though nothing else of significance was landed in the round. Ryan got off a number of shots to the head of Smith in the 16th before Smith got in a shot to the stomach to close the round. In the 17th, Smith landed a hard right to the body. Ryan retaliated with a hard left to Smith's damaged eye, for which Smith responded with a hard right to the face. In the 18th, Ryan landed a hard left that broke Smith's nose, leaving him bloody and groggy at the close of the round. In the 19th, Ryan dominated Smith landing rights and lefts to the face with blood flying everywhere. Smith was saved by the bell as Ryan couldn't finish him. In the 20th and final round, Ryan repeatedly landed punch after punch on Smith's face but was still cautious of Smith's right. In the end, Joe Trewinski declared Ryan the victor and the unquestioned world welterweight champion. Ryan would need only four rounds to knock out Billy Layton on September 13th under a revival tent on a sandbar in the middle of the Missouri River after protests derailed plans for the initial venue. Crazy, I know. This led to a January 18th, 1895 contest with one of the greatest and most popular fighters of all time in the Hall of Fame former middleweight world champion, non-pareil Jack Dempsey. The fight was scheduled for 15 rounds and contested under the welterweight limit. The bout wasn't much of a contest as Dipsy's team had the fight stopped in the third round to save him from further damage. This would actually be the final fight of Dipsy's career as we later learned that Dipsy was likely suffering from the recurrence of a second stint with tuberculosis and would be dead a little over nine months later at the age of 32. Ryan and mysterious Billy Smith would lock horns for a fourth time on May 27, 1895 when Ryan put his welterweight title on the line in Coney Island. 
The two fighters weighed in at 148 pounds as agreed. The fight started at a lightning speed pace. Smith would be the aggressor as the fight went on and started to take the reins in the fifth as he repeatedly landed heavy shots on Ryan, dropping him in the tenth. In the 18th round, Ryan would land a combination of hard shots that split Smith's ear, sending him lying over the ropes in pain. This forced the police to step in and call the fight. A pre-fight agreement stated that if the fight were to be stopped by the police, it would be declared a draw. Ryan retained his world welterweight title. This would be Ryan's last fight of 1895, and in December of the same year, he issued an open challenge to any middleweight in the world and proclaimed that if Bod Fitzsimmons vacated his title for a move to heavyweight, he would claim status as the world middleweight champion and was prepared to defend. After a January 16, 1896 points victory over Henry Baker, Ryan would meet one of the most infamous fighters in the history of boxing and Hall of Fame former world middleweight champion Charles Kidd McCoy on March 2nd in Queens, New York. The fight was billed as the vacant American and world middleweight title at 154 pounds being up for grab. In his early days as a boxer, Kidd McCoy was a sparring partner of Tommy Ryan's. Ryan thought McCoy had possibilities and taught him a lot about boxing and when this knowledge was combined with McCoy's natural skill of clever boxing, sharp hitting, and crafty defense, McCoy went on to become an all-time great. On one occasion, the champion became a little too rough with his young opponent, battered him around the ring, and embarrassed him. McCoy never forgot the humiliation and vowed quietly to someday avenge himself. Through the first three rounds of this contest, it was a cat and mouse game where both boxers had moments, though Ryan employed movement with McCoy on the chase. Neither fighter did much in the fourth, and the fifth round closed with McCoy chasing Ryan around the ring, landing lefts and rights until Ryan fell. Both men tumbled to the ground in the sixth before each landed a couple of hard straights with the crowd cheering for McCoy. In the seventh, the two men fought evenly, though McCoy slipped to a knee and took his time getting up. After an exchange, McCoy landed four straight lefts to Ryan's body in the eighth. McCoy then got off a left and right to the neck before landing a hard left to the chin, sending Ryan to his knees and bringing the crowd to their feet in cheers. McCoy dropped Ryan with a hard right to the head in the ninth before teeing off as he looked for a knockout, leaving Ryan bleeding and in distress though he made it through the round. McCoy opened the 11th teeing off with lefts and rights and again looked as though he would finish Ryan who stayed on his feet. McCoy continued to work behind a jab as Ryan's face started to swell along with continuous bleeding from the mouth. In the 12th, McCoy dropped Ryan with a right uppercut, forcing a 9 count. McCoy continued to dominate Ryan, chasing him around the ring in the 13th. In the 14th, McCoy cornered Ryan and worked the body to set him up for the 15th, in which a left to the jaw sent Ryan falling into the ropes, though he was up at the count of 10, before being caught with a left and a right that sent him down and out for the count. With the win, McCoy became the new world middleweight champion. This would be the first loss of Ryan's career who came into the contest undefeated in 41 fights. Reports suggested that McCoy approached Ryan in 1896 and asked for a bout, claiming he was out of shape and needed the money. Ryan had always liked McCoy and agreed to a bout. Ryan did not take the fight seriously and did little preparation for the contest besides running to strengthen his win. McCoy prepared himself rigorously for the meeting. The rest was history. Ryan returned to his winning ways, which included an August 20th 20 round points victory over the wizard gentleman Dick Moore. This led to a fifth matchup with mysterious Billy Smith on November 25th in Queens. After a fairly even fight, the bout was stopped in the ninth round after Ryan let off a number of shots on Smith with Ryan being awarded the victory. This was met with boos from the crowd. On February 24th, 1897, Ryan would defeat former Australian lightweight champion Tom Tracy via ninth round TKO in what was listed as a world welterweight title shot. This led to a September 8th return bout with Charles Kidd McCoy in Syracuse. The first two rounds featured McCoy tattooing his left on Ryan's jaw. In the third, Ryan moved to infighting where he got the better of the work. In the fourth, after exchanges, Ryan sent McCoy into the ropes where he teed off as the round ended with the crowd in a roar. In the fifth round, Ryan was taking the lead, landing a hard right uppercut followed by a right to the jaw before the police suddenly stepped in and stopped the fight. 
The referee sent both fighters to the corner and ultimately declared about a draw, though Ryan was in control at the time. Ryan would kick off 1898 with the February 25th contest against the original young Corbett, George Green. The bout was reported to be a beautiful contest of cleverness, with neither fighter having a blemish at the end. The two alternated the lead until the 13th round when Ryan's conditioning came through. In the 18th, Green fell from pure exhaustion and was counted to 9 before getting up and falling to his knees again and counted out. Ryan's next fight would be on June 13th against Tommy West. Ryan would stop West in the 14th of a scheduled 20 rounds. On October 24th, Ryan would meet the strong and stout Jack Bonner in a fight billed as the Undisputed Middleweight Championship. Scheduled for 20 rounds, Bonner's condition started to wane after the 12th, which allowed Ryan to take full control, all but knocking Bonner out. Though Bunner lasted 20 rounds with Ryan letting off the gas a bit, it was a clear victory for Ryan and his claim as the top middleweight in the world. Ryan and Bonner would rematch on November 8th with Ryan picking up a six-round newspaper decision. After a December 2nd no contest in a rematch with Tommy West, Ryan would then knock out a game Dick O'Brien on December 23rd in his final fight of 1898. Ryan would start 1899 with a March 1st knockout of Charlie Johnson in eight rounds. Ryan would then move into a 20-round points victory over Jack Moffat on August 31st. On September 18th, in a fight billed as a world middleweight title fight, Ryan would take on a man known as the Harlem Coffee Cooler and former colored world middleweight champion and English middleweight champion Frank Craig. Scheduled for 20 rounds, the fight took place in front of 7,000 at the Coney Island Athletic Club in Brooklyn. Craig had spent time in England prior to this matchup where he had knocked out the likes of Jim Smith and Frank Slavin. In this contest, though, it was the story of Ryan's shiftiness and head work as he showed why he was one of the great tacticians in the sport. It was Craig who landed first to open things up, closing the first with the left to Ryan's nose. In the second, it looked as though Craig was going to take full control as a right to the ear sent Ryan down, where he answered the count at the last second. In the third, Craig forced the pace and landed two right uppercuts on Ryan's after being caught, followed by a left to the stomach. Ryan returned with the hard right to the face that forced Craig to clinch. Ryan then caught him with a right to the ear as he broke out of the clinch and landed several jabs to keep Craig at bay in closing the round. After getting in a couple of good shots to the body to start the fourth, Ryan landed several lefts and rights to the head as he used his head movement and footwork to make Craig miss each shot in return. From here, Ryan took control as he peppered Craig with left and left in the fifth which left Craig spitting up blood. A left to the jaw and a right uppercut to the chin by Ryan brought about more blood from Craig's mouth in the sixth as Ryan forced him to the ropes. Ryan opened the seventh with another shot that forced Craig to clinch and put him in a defensive mode for the remainder of the round. A left uppercut from Ryan staggered Craig in the eighth where Ryan then used his jab to send Craig reeling all over the ring. Craig responded with a shot to the body near the round's closing, followed up with the left and a right to the head at the sound of the gong. Craig looked weak as he walked back to his corner. Ryan opened the knife with a three-punch combo and sent a hard right that made Craig hit the floor before being hit, taking an eight count. Craig subsequently dropped to a knee three additional times to avoid punishment. Ryan finally caught up with him and started to pummel him with rights and lefts before Craig dropped an additional two times, the latter sending both men to the floor where Craig held on until the referee was able to get them apart, just as the bell rang. Craig stumbled blindly to his corner. In the 10th, Ryan rushed Craig landing lefts and rights, though Craig was able to land a wild shot before a right from Ryan to the side of Craig's head sent him to the floor. Craig was able to get up just before 10 before again being rushed by Ryan, forcing the referee to step in and stop the fight with Ryan picking up the TKO victory. On May 19, 1900, Ryan would again step in the ring with Charles Kidd McCoy in a six-rounder in Chicago. Ryan forced the fighting in the first part of the contest, though he operated cautiously. McCoy did the better work on the inside and saved himself by staying back and letting Ryan force things from the outside. The middle rounds were rather tame, but the two men started to exchange towards the tail end of the fight, with McCoy landing several hard shots that made Ryan grunt in the final round. In the end, the referee, Malachi Hogan, declared McCoy the winner of the contest. 
dissident Ryan into protest where he punched the referee in the jaw. Police and club officials broke up the fight before any major damage could be done. It was stated that there was a pre-fight agreement that were both fighters standing after six, the fight would be declared the draw, though referee Hogan wasn't having such. At some point later, the decision was officially changed and ruled a draw. Next up for Ryan would be a July 24th matchup with the first world light heavyweight champion and world heavyweight title challenger, Jack Root. Despite Ryan dropping Root in the first round and Root landing a few hard shots that left Ryan bloodied in the second, the fight was lauded as a disappointment by the 6,000 in attendance. During the fifth round, several hundred attendees left the hall in disgust as they cried fate during the contest, which was said to be more like an exhibition. In the end, the fight was declared a draw. On November 27th, Ryan would be lined up against the battle-tested kid Carter for a six-rounder in Chicago. Carter's strong right hand sent Ryan to the canvas in both the first and second rounds. Ryan bounced back in a major way in the final four rounds as he dissected Carter, who fought the last three rounds without knowing much of what was going on outside of a man being in front of him. Carter was standing at the end, but Ryan won the decision without any disagreement. On March 4, 1901, Ryan and Tommy West would meet in a return bout with Ryan forcing West's corner to throw in the sponge in the 17th round, gaining victory. This led to back-to-back -back contests with George Green, a.k.a. Young Corbett. Their October 10th contest ended with Ryan losing via disqualification after an accidental foul in the sixth round of a scheduled 15. Ryan and Young Corbett would meet again on January 30th, 1902, with Ryan knocking out Young Corbett in the seventh of a scheduled 10. Keeping his rematch streak going, Ryan would then knock out mysterious Billy Smith in four rounds on March 14, 1902, to close out their rivalry. On September 15th, he'd need only six rounds to knock out Kid Carter. Ryan would continue his winning ways as his pace of fight slowed down. On January 27, 1904, Ryan would be matched in a six-rounder with former World Light Heavyweight Champion Philadelphia Jack O'Brien. O'Brien was specifically calling for this match as he viewed a win over Ryan as making him the unquestioned best in the world at middleweight. The fight took place in Philadelphia. After piling up a lead through the first four rounds of the contest, O'Brien then dropped Ryan with a hard shot in the fifth round. Ryan got to his feet at the count of eight, though on groggy leg. A hard left to the stomach from Ryan then sent O'Brien to his knees. Upon getting to his feet, Ryan pounced as he started to tee off on O'Brien, whose body was badly hurt, and ultimately, O'Brien was saved by the bell prior to being knocked out. While O'Brien had been down, one of his cornermen threw a wet sponge full of water on him. Those in attendance viewed this as a stoppage, though the referee allowed the fight to continue. Both men had moments in the sixth, and when it was all said and done, it was ultimately ruled a draw, though there were varying opinions as it related to the overall verdict. On November 23rd, Ryan would rematch Jack Root in Philadelphia. The fighters were 30 minutes late to the ring, as it was reported by referee Jack McGee that the two fighters were counting the box office money and it was viewed as a slim gate. When the fight in itself did commence, it ended up being a worse affair than their previous contest when after Root dropped Ryan in the fourth by what was considered a light punch, referee McGeehan left the ring calling the fight a fate. With the crowd already in an uproar, police had to jump in the ring to protect the fighters as they cleared the hall and escorted them out. The fight was ultimately declared a no contest. This would be the final notable fight of Tommy Ryan's career as he fight once more gaining a win in 1904. Ryan would then retire before returning with the win and a draw in 1907. He then retired for good on May 9, 1908. Ryan had claimed to being the greatest middleweight and welterweight of his era. Tommy Ryan would finish his career with a record of 82 victories, 2 losses, 13 draws. 68 of his victories came via knockout. He had six no decisions and two no contests. It's estimated that Ryan fought over 200 matches in his career. While his in-ring career ended, Ryan would continue involvement in the sport of boxing, whether it was as an inspector or giving lectures across the country. Ryan was considered to be an expert in every facet of the game, and when he ultimately became a trainer, he was able to pass down these very same traits. There is no footage of the great Tommy Ryan in action, though we are lucky enough to have an old video promo of him him at an older age describing his feats in the ring. With that, thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed your viewing experience.